This college football picks week five edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, and Arizona. From boosted parlays to in-game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a one thousand dollars risk-free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit and receive up to five hundred dollars in bonus cash. That's PropSwap.com. Promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by PicksWise. PicksWise is the number one app for free sports betting picks, props, and parlays. Download the free PicksWise app now to make your next bet better. We're also brought to you by Odds Crowd. Are you the best college football better in the U.S.? Odds Crowd challenges you to prove it with their free-to-play fantasy betting contest. Odds Crowd gives away hundreds of dollars in weekly contests, including the hundred dollar SGPN exclusive free roll contest. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app. Your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. Ooh, welcome everybody to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer? dog just feeling good. Cause I know I, I, we look good on this side of the table, Sean. Yeah. Without further ado. Joining us as always in studio, Kobe Dan, aka the Dan to base. We had the money tree in here. We moved it so Colby would be able to. Uh, you no, know, we we wouldn't want to rob the audience of uh, Colby's amazing good looks for the college football episode. Colby, how's it going, man? Dude, I mean, well, the money tree is me. All right, looking mm. at all this green on this sheet, but I'm doing all right, brother. Uh, How are you guys doing? You guys, you ready know, for- normally I'm not one to tout, <laughs> and. Uh, Again, NFL hasn't been amazing. However, college football, I'm sitting at 56% against the spread. Colby's sitting at 61% against the spread. Kramer hitting 60% of his dogs. Locks. Oh, sorry, his locks. I'm hitting 50% of my <laughs> dogs. Dog. And it is uh with the exception of the six pack, which everyone is struggling at because of Colby's game selection. Can I can I tout <laughs> myself real sure. quick? Because I do have the worst overall record, but somehow I'm uh, 500 or better on both lock categories. Mm, mm, yep. Uh, mm. And one little kind of a statistical nugget from last week: somehow Colby went 10 and three, missed on his lock, missed on his dog, <laughs> missed on his tease, and missed on his bonus lock. So, it, and I hit on my lock, my dog, and my bonus lock. So it seems like a formula is coming about. Take all of Colby's picks, unless he's talking about his locks. And then take Kramer and I, uh, our locks and bonus locks, and even dog, and take my dogs because my dogs have been barking. I mean, at fifty percent, and I'm and I try to give at least like plus one fifty, plus one seventy five. Notre Dame money line that was a fun, uh, fun game. I was driving back, hung out in uh, you know up uh, uh, some little beach town. Ooh. Made my wife listen to the uh, Notre Dame football oh, broadcast on the drive romantic. back. Yeah, it, it was airing on Sirius, and it was kind of funny to me that the Notre Dame game airs on the Catholic Channel. So there was just <laughs> something great about listening oh. to the Catholic Channel and having money on the event <laughs> that they are uh, describing. And the Notre Dame announcers are great. They're also insane homers. Which when you have money on a game, it's just so awesome uh, to hear just <laughs> the, this insane homerism. The college play-by-play play guys are the best. They are really good. And then when uh, Notre Dame had that kick return for a touchdown, I was genuinely worried about the guy's health. Like I, I thought he <laughs> blasted an aorta or, or something. He was gonna have a stroke. How, was, how's how's Graham Mertz's NIL deal doing? He's got this T-shirt <laughs> company. I wonder how that's is that thriving? Because between him and Spencer Rattler and these NIL deals, they look like you know. Yeah, I mean, couple of mediocre quarterbacks. Uh, well, right? What I was watching even, with you yeah. and Patty, I go more like Spencer rattled. Am yeah. I right? Oh. <laughs> didn't, oh. didn't boom. I mean, I they're unde- they're undefeated, but very very fraudulent. All right, let's get to it. College football picks, of course, brought to you by Win Bet. That's right. You want to win big? You Got to do it with Win Bet. Make sure you head over to WinBet.com. W Y N N B E T dot com or download the Win Betting app. Active in so many states, just added Arizona, of course, Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, and Virginia. Whew. So much action over at WinBet Live. In game wagering, super fun there. Make sure you head over to winbet.com, W Y N N B E T.com. Get that $1,000 risk 
free sports bets. Let's go, baby. Thought you were gonna go with Spencer the big baby rattler. Or ooh, maybe Spencer ooh, the ooh. broken rattler. Ooh. Oh, okay. I like that. Spencer needs his rattler. That one's pretty <laughs> fun. Because he's a baby and he needs his oh, you want your little rattler, Spencer? That's Those, that's that's a fun one. Yeah. Spencer <laughs> needs his bottle, rattler. <laughs> Uh, All right. Just, I mean, it does speak to the fact we were having this conversation off air, yeah. but uh, the case to buy or sell the Matty Corral Heisman trophy. And I yeah. think the case for why, you know, regardless of the outcome of this Alabama game, uh, it's still pretty strong is I just think these quarterbacks suck. There's a lot of quarterbacks that people were like, surefire NFL draft pick. You saw the odds. You're like, okay, I guess I'll well, believe yeah, that. This is, this is a great cause uh, well, I've been talking to Colby and you guys about like, Hey, let's take his ticket. Let's get it over at propswap.com. Colby, get that bonus uh, SGP promo code uh, up to $500 bonus cash. <laughs> I said, I say all that in the office. I, I think at plus one eighty, this is a good time to sell the Rattler ticket. I, I, I just, I get maybe why you wait a little bit, the but Colby, ticket. Yeah, sorry. The corral ticket. The, the, the Rattler ticket. Yeah. Don't, I was like, well, don't worry about selling. Yeah. I was like, Hang who's on buying? To that thing, right? it, that's a penny stock right now. <laughs> well, what do you, uh, Colby? It is your ticket. What are you, where's your head at right now with the uh, Matty Corral? Uh, well, I think, I mean, honestly, the, I see both sides of this year. With, uh, he's on the verge of playing Alabama, which they scored like 49 or whatever on them last, last year or 42, whatever it was. 48. Uh, yeah. I think. And uh, which that, that would be good for the stats. Yeah, but I also see the angle. But of then like, Bryce Young also probably is going to light yeah, up Old Miss. Exactly, and I think that's his strongest competition right now. Wouldn't you say so? They're yeah, they're no, both sure. they're both listed. I think on win so, at at one eight plus yeah, one eighty. They're the favorites, and and yeah, I guess just I I thought I thought I worked for a company that was about putting <laughs> the chips on the table, letting not it ride, hedging their bets. <laughs> Let's go, guys. I I mean I just like them down the stretch because I don't think there's going to be too many people. That can really pop up, challenge him statistically, and so if there isn't one of those Bryce Young type situations where he rolls undefeated, he has a big win maybe in the SEC championship game. Uh, yeah, I get, it. I get the Bryce Young case. There's a bigger media machine behind him I, I, as well. I just, yeah, I just think there's a chance Matt Corral has a you know a, a stinker of a game and that hurts, or they lose a couple games and that takes him out of it, or. We get to the Heisman weekend, and he's still not better than plus one eighty going into that well, in, into the actual announcement. There my is my that. thing is like I I don't even know if it's hedging at this point because I I just I don't know if the price gets much better. I think you either ride the ticket out or you sell it. Now. If Bryce Young gets hurt, Lane Kiffin aware of odds. We know this. Yeah, Lane Kiffin aware of what it means to <laughs> coach a Heisman Trophy winner <laughs> for recruiting in the future. He's going to help with those stats. So we're betting against basically Bryce Young likes to use his legs, right? Yes. Well, I mean, yeah. Has been known to use his legs from time yeah, to time. Yeah. An injury. Mm. One injury. Crowd runs too, though, dude. And, and to yeah. talk about the odd ceiling, boom, he's going to minus two hundred. So mm. Mm. hodl over here. I got diamond <laughs> hands. I don't know about these two. All right. It's not my ticket, though. We're gonna get to some of these uh I mean the week five slate, a juicy slate. Colby, you're actually going to be a, in Nebraska for the Nebraska game. Yeah, I'm going to Northwestern Nebraska. Any fans out there? Let me know. I'm at the Colby D on Twitter. Um, yeah, as, as long as uh, as long as the car gets me there, Sean. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I should be there. So come on out if you're in the area, and uh, I'll give you a little. I'll buy you a, a beer or a Jameson shot or something. I don't know. I'll well, figure it out. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Are we sending Colby? Yeah, with we got to send Colby with some. We still have a bunch of those airplane bottles, airplane and, and bottles lighters. of liquor there and lighter. Go. So uh, Colby we does be, America. <laughs> Colby does America. So if you're in the Nebraska area, going to that game, make sure you hit up Colby Dan. And then we have uh, this week's. Special edition of Real Men of DGENS. SGPN presents Real Men of DGENS. Real Men of DGENS. We salute you. Richard Alderetti. This is my guy, dude. Richard Alderetti is a is a uh, a good friend of mine, guys. I want to tell you this story. Uh First off, one of the first Latino film editors in Hollywood, a good friend of mine, big SGP fan. Uh, currently, I had to go see him at the hospital. Things aren't going good in his in his life. It's looking like it's coming to an end. But I sat there 
you know, did the whole thing today, uh, talking to him for about two hours as he held my hand and we're going through things in life. I've been friends with him over a decade. And, uh, and then, you know, we're, we're going through, Hey, I love you, man. I love you too, man. You know, you know, I'll see you on the other side. And then he goes, but let me ask you something. Who you got in the game tonight? <laughs> Talking about the Eagles, Cowboys, Redskins. So good. Yeah. So Richard Alderetti. And by the way, I told him Eagles plus four and a half. He said, Ooh. you know, maybe he can get his granddaughter something nice. Add on to that, <laughs> that money he's going to leave behind. Shout out to my guy, Richard Alderetti. Well, great, and, uh, great guy. yeah. Thanks yeah. for tuning in all those years uh, to Richard and uh, shout out to you. Appreciate that. And uh, go going out in real DJ fashion with you, a little, uh, it, tell it, them to go money line. I mean, yeah, if that's what, yeah, 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 exactly. Tell, tell them right. to find I can still send a text. Shout out. I, I got normally, this, right? you know, I tell everyone sign up at win, but if you're in Richard's situation, find a credit book, you know, <laughs> and if you've ever seen karate kid, Richard was an editor on karate kid. He oh, is responsible badass. for the banana Rama song. Cruel summer being in that film. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Well, really let, makes let's, the film. let's hope he hits the money line. And look, look, suddenly you guys are, are advising, pushing to the to chips to the table. I, I'm sure if you asked Richard, he would have told you to hold the ticket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hold the I, ticket. I believe so. Yeah. I believe so. Don't sell <laughs> USC lane seven in Boulder, Colorado, the buff seven point home dogs plus two fifteen on the money line. I'll start here and, and Colby, I know it's tough for you to fade your Buffaloes, but man, the or bison as Ryan likes to say, the, <laughs> the Colorado offense is just so insanely bad. They've put up 20 points in the last three games. I mean, the offense is just completely inept. I know USC has had their struggles. I normally love taking the Colorado team as a home dog at elevation here, but I, I think you got to make an exception here and just fade Colorado. Yeah. And I look, I, I've been fading them. Uh, the past two weeks and it's cash for me. I didn't have the nerve to put them on the six pack because they're my boys. But now that I know the season's over they're they're there, they're there. Now and I and uh, look, I mean, it, it's really painful because we have a really good receiving core. We have a decent run game. It's just, we're starting a freshman quarterback and we had like, we, we have like three quarterbacks as of six months ago that are starting elsewhere in college football. So just a crazy scenario. And, and we're starting Brandon Lewis and he's a kid and, and, and the offense sucks. Uh, they load the box, uh, make this it so you can't run. Up. Yeah. USC will cover this. Give me USC minus seven. This is easy money guys. Well, they're also coming off a loss. I think there, there's a lot of reasons to like USC in this one, but yeah, I mean, just looking at the the numbers, how do you average 80 yards passing a game? Yeah. Not, yeah. I mean, that's like what army yeah. <laughs> averages who runs the triple option. Well, and the worst part about it, like I said, like Colorado's receiving core is really talented. And I, like, I wonder if, if this, you know, maintains, uh, they might see some really talented receivers transfer out in the off season. So I, I, they really got to fix this. They got to, I don't know if they got to go to a backup. I understand the the second, because of JT shrouds injuries out for the year, we had a Tennessee transfer coming in. We went with Lewis and behind him is just walk-ons. So it's, it's a really bad situation there in Boulder. <laughs> Well, and, and just to, just to highlight how bad it is, I mean, they are behind Air Force in uh, passing yards per game. They're behind UConn. They're behind <laughs> San Diego State, That's noted bad. runner of the football. Georgia State, triple option. Syracuse, Georgia Southern, another triple mm, option, mm, and Minnesota, mm, who just mm, lost mm, the Bowling mm. Green. This is a bad. So, team. I mean, and yeah. only ahead of Navy and Army. They're only ahead of Navy and Army, and yeah. and they don't run the triple option. Part of that, I mean, look, yes, they're that bad. Part of it is also the eleven they, power fives on the schedule. Uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> they've only played a couple of them. <laughs> Eastern Michigan heads to Nor to Cal, Illinois. Hey, Co- Colby, is College Game Day going to be here for this matchup in North? <laughs> I might be Northern though. Illinois. <laughs> what, what's better, College Game Day or me? Look, do I pass by Lincoln and just go straight to the Cobb Shop? <laughs> or DeK- uh, people uh, give me shit about the DeKalb, pronounce- right. Yeah, is DeKalb. it DeKalb? Come on, dude. We'll, we'll we'll stick with DeKalb. Important. Northern <laughs> Illinois lay in two and a half at home. We're taping this on a Monday. You know, I'm not going to fade the Eagles on a Monday. Eastern Michigan five and one straight up. They 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 threw people off the scent a little bit by not covering against uh, my Minutemen, aka UMass. So I I think the Eastern Michigan team is the better team here. I know they're they're traveling to Illinois, but that's not a crazy road trip for this team. And and they've looked good on the road as well. I'm I'm all over Eastern Michigan here, plus two and a half. Colby, am I right or wrong? You're right. The wrong team is favored, man. Uh, look, Eastern Michigan's a good team. I mean. 
uh, in the Mac. I think Chris Creighton's done an unbelievable job with this team, and they have two good quarterbacks: Ben Bryant, the Cincinnati transfer. Um, I just think that the wrong team's favorite. Eastern Michigan's a, c- a contender in the Mac, and they're going to prove it here. Okay, we're, so we're going to just so we're, we're we're fading Rocky Lombardi. <laughs> He is related to Vince Lombardi. Are we worried about he that? Is We're fading a guy named Rocky to Vince yeah. Lombardi on Monday, on a Monday this, this. When, the, when the Cowboys play the Eagles. <laughs> We're gonna, you're gonna fade a guy named Rocky. Uh, you yeah. probably should. He's not very good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you guys. I think you know, it's this feels trappy. You know what they say? Take the two and a half, lay the three and a half. So we'll take the two and a half. With Eastern Michigan, Wong T's are written all over at Eastern Michigan. Mm. Yeah, I think Wong's more of an NFL thing, Sean. Mm. Okay, maybe it doesn't apply to the value <laughs> of moving points in college. Pick number three in the Colby Six Pack Northwestern heads to Lincoln, Nebraska, oh. where the Huskers lay in ten and a half minus four twenty five. You know, it's got to be kind of brutal for our buddy uh, Larry the Cable Guy and and all the <laughs> Nebraska fans because you know Nebraska. They've they've been in this weird zone, especially this year. It was like a make it or break it year, and I feel like we still haven't gotten any move it movement towards making it or breaking it. Like they've looked good enough to give you some optimism, but then they're not yeah. winning these games. And they're like the Michigan State game. You gotta win. They should have won that. They, they should have won the Illinois game. Yeah, they should have won the Illinois game. They they were alive against uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. So it's like, uh, do you? But they haven't looked so horrible where you're like clearly Scott Frost has to be fired, right? So I, I think they're in this weird area. The special teams coach. Special teams has been really that, bad. That, that's the honestly, in my opinion, like those are the three losses because of their special teams. Yeah, and and the fact that it it's sitting right at this ten and a half, and they they've had so many issues with the return game, with the kicking game. I, I as much as I'm not in love with Northwestern, I think I, I think you have to take the ten and a half. Because Northwest Nebraska is so bad at like giving up a point here or there. I'm on Nebraska. I'll be there. be there. And I believe that uh, I actually believe they're pretty good. If they can just figure out the special teams angle here. See, but that's the thing like, is like they, they look pretty Col- good, but they just haven't figured it out. Colby, you have this thing for Scott Frost, and it's getting <laughs> in the way of your ability to handicap. I know Northwestern is what trash. Do, what do you mean? I, I had Nebraska the, plus five. That co- thing hit on and I, Saturday. And I know you've you've been hot allegedly picking games in college football. But holy crap, the co- who, who's your number one coach in college football? I mean, uh, Pat who Fitzgerald? was your number one coach in but college football? But not this year, buddy. No, not this year. <laughs> you wrote the article before this year. Yeah, that that once I saw their <laughs> offense, I go, oh, okay. It's one of the every once in a every like once every five years. Fitzgerald will will have like a, a four and eight season, but the the rest will be like nine, ten wins. This is that four and eight season. I think they're live dogs. The more I look at this game, I they, just can't trust this Nebraska team. No. And they fall in the category, and maybe I'll get burned just like Cliff Kitchens what? burned me. But bat this this is, Scott Frost is not a coach. He like ten and a half. Well, period. look, I guarantee you, I'm not going to get kicked out for rooting too hard. Adrian in, Martin- in Nebraska. <laughs> All right. Oh please, 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 please. <laughs> Please. Oh, that would be pretty fun. <laughs> if you are at the game, make sure you document everything that happens, please. And, with, and with the number of Will Wade references he screams yeah. out. I'm still going to carry that gonna, on. Are you going to yell about Northwestern's basketball yeah, yeah. coach? Chris Collins. <laughs> Chris Collins. I got to know. <laughs> I got to know. No, you won't get kicked out. You'd probably just get your ass kicked for yeah. being annoying. I feel like Nebraska self regulates in the fan base. <laughs> Could be. UNLV heads to San Antonio, Texas, UTSA. Kramer's bonus, bonus, a uh, uh, play, no, just bonus, single bonus. Oh, I thought you th- didn't you throw them out on no. the last show, like as we were closing out the nope, show. No, nope, they were my official bonus lock. Okay, I'm on to this team, Sean. Love that they're in the six pack this week. Yeah, uh, laying twenty one. Yep. And you know, I, I think the untrained eye would look at UNLV. Oh man, they only lost to Fresno State by eight points in Fresno. Oh man, this team isn't that bad, but. UNLV is really that bad. I, I'm all over UTSA here. Kramer, you're a big UTSA guy. I'll let you start. Are you are you rocking UTSA? Oh well, I mean the first all you gotta know. Now I could this could be bad because here here are the seven winless teams in college football: mm-hmm. Arizona, UConn, Florida State, UMass, <laughs> Navy, Ohio, and UNLV. So I think we're getting probably the worst of a number here, but. UNLV is trash. 
They now take out to the road to take on UTSA, who is a great team. Yeah. You saw what they just did. Now, I, I did you watch that game by the way? Which game? The Memphis UTSA yeah. game? They came back. Memphis was up twenty eight nothing. I, I saw I checked was, the score yeah. early in the day and I was like, God damn it. It was like fourteen to nothing, I think. Yeah. What that, was the spread in UTSA Memphis plus last three. week? Oh, okay. But they can't they pulled a Buffalo Bills. They came all the way well, back and, and won and, the game out right. Yeah. And maybe they're gonna have trouble getting up for this game against UNLV. They do have the Hilltoppers next week. Maybe a look ahead line for UTSA. This is a I, I just think at home they're gonna they're gonna destroy them. This is in most cases, this is a watch out game, right? Stock high versus stock low. Look ahead spot, sleepy spot, whatever you want to call it, but you can't take UNLV. I'm on the running rebels. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, I think they're going to rebound from that Fresno loss. Rebound coming into the that Alamo. Was, that was their Super Bowl. <laughs> Only losing by eight points is the is the best they've looked all I'm year. I'm confused at Colby's handicapping Here, methods here's, this year. Here's my thing Marcus Arroyo. He's what? winless as a head coach at UNLV. Yeah. I was telling Patty C. He's though, lo- lost to Iowa State by 45, lost to Arizona State by 27. That was deceiving, though. For through three quarters, that was a close game. And I think between that and the Fresno game, I think this team, and he brought in good recruiting classes to UNLV. I think they're close to turning a corner and getting their first win for him. It almost happened last week. Mm. I don't think they're going to get the win here, but I think it's going to be a close game. Colby is on the sharper side of this than us today, Cole, uh, Sean. I think I think we're taking the chalky side. Where's the side, squares but, here uh, with UTSA? I, yeah, but I, again, I told you that everything, all my gambling instincts say to take UNLV, but you can't take UNLV. Yeah, can't take UNLV in this. No, they're they're in, they're like the uh, Jets. No offense, Colby. <laughs> Western Kentucky, that's low the blow. East Lansing, Michigan, Michigan State, laying ten and a half. Hilltoppers plus three thirty on the money line. 61 and a half points is the total. Watch a bunch of that Hilltopper uh, Indiana game. They were a live dog that entire game. Michigan State with a kind of wild win over uh, Nebraska. Didn't cover the spread. I think this is a nice get up spot for Western Kentucky. And you look at their scores, like they they do not struggle to score points. And if you're going to give them an, an extra 10 and a half, Michigan State, this could be a little bit of a letdown game for Michigan State after that. Kind of, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that Nebraska game probably took it out of them a little bit. I think it'd be easy to look past this Western Kentucky team if you haven't been watching them play. Uh, I I like the Western Kentucky here plus ten and a half. Colby? Interesting. I, I'm on uh, Michigan State here. Midnight Mel Tucker. Wow. Uh, look, and the logic is this: Western Kentucky's three and O ATS, uh, and they're playing back to back Big Ten Power Five schools. The last week was at home. Look ahead spot for Michigan State. They head to Rutgers next week. Yes. Maybe, yes. Maybe a bigger look ahead spot for Western Kentucky. Yes. That game. Getting UTSA after. Um, I they just probably think don't it, look past the, the big one. I just think <laughs> it takes a toll after you play Indiana. The next week you hit the road for another Big Ten school. Mm. I'm gonna take Michigan State. I love I love that uh Western Kentucky offense with Bailey Zap or Zappy or whatever his name is the Houston. They have like they're the able Houston. to move the ball yeah. though, man. I, I I'm surprised you're on uh, Michigan state here, Colby. I just think there's Western r- Kentucky is the, is the right they, side here. Kenneth have, Walker <laughs> is the, is going to run for another 200. I mean, they put game. up 59 on uh, Tennessee, put up 35 on army 31 on Indiana. Like th- this when you say Tennessee, you mean Tennessee Martin. <laughs> yeah. Tennessee FCS. Martin. Skyhawks baby. I mean, uh, army army's defense isn't horrible. Indiana. Not that exactly. was a backdoor cover against yeah, army. They're not. Um, I, I just think Michigan state's run game ha- with Kenneth Walker is, is going to run wild in this 10 one. and a half. a lot. Yeah. They haven't played a defense like Michigan state. You're insane. Sean lay the points. Wow. You guys are crazy. Uh, Hilltoppers Michigan state. I mean, honestly, like I would oh. imagine when the Danta base top 25 debuts, uh, next week, I think October, whenever, whenever you're first, you're allowed to have a rankings contractually obligated. Yeah. It, it, I would it, imagine Michigan state will be in there uh, quite high because they, they've looked good. They, they've done nothing to suggest that they're not going to roll. Well, they actually should have lost last week, but, but once again, Nebraska special teams, but it was a close game. So but, but they got you, like a punt but, return with like a minute left to yeah. send the game into overtime. Winning, winning games yeah. is, is yeah. you know, that's the sign of, but I agree. I just think they're going to be able to the little brother, uh, Western Kentucky, Fresno state heads to Honolulu to square off against the fighting rainbow warriors. 
Hawaii catching 10 points plus 300 on the money line total 62 and a half. Hmm. I don't know. What do you, what do you think about this Fresno state team Colby? I, I, Hawaii I haven't seen much of them as far as like, it would make me interested to, to back them. But wh- where are you at? I think Fresno state's really good. And I was all over at UNLV covering that on Friday night. Um, yeah, and and I think uh, what was the spread against UNLV? It was like thirty-one, thirty-two points. Yeah, point I, I, something. I yeah. think this was a bit of a wake-up call game for Fresno State. I, I, they definitely, you know, looked like the better team there, but th- it was a shit ton of points. Now they have it one extra day of rest for the trip to Hawaii. Minus ten kind of feels low for Fresno State, who's like a legit good team. Yeah, I mean, really, Very low. they were beating Oregon in the fourth quarter. They beat UCLA. Um, uh, if there was ever a large playoff, I think they could do a lot of damage. Um, they, they they have a great quarterback, Washington transfer, and we, Jake Hayner, R- Ronnie Rivers, son of uh, uh, Reggie Rivers, who was a running back for the Denver Broncos in the '90s. And their receivers are loaded. Whether it's Jalen Cropper, whether it's Wheatfall, whether it's Josh Kelly, they have three, four guys that could potentially be on NFL rosters. This Fresno team's gonna roll. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. do you do you? Uh, I mean, I, I think most, if you look at what they've done this year, you can cut them some slack for how they performed against UNLV. And now they get a Hawaii team that's given up uh, no less than 35 points. And that was to Portland state 45 to Oregon state 44 to UCLA. So I don't know one of the better. I mean, honestly, we're talking about quarterback play. Yeah. One of the better quarterback uh, quarterbacks in terms of output this year. And again, yeah, like, you know, I know the Hawaii, we talked about it, right. Playing at a high school, probably not the greatest home home uh, field and Fresno needs a, needs a bounce back spot here. Yeah, definitely. I love this spot. Ten points only. Come on, give me the Bulldogs. Feels a little trappy for that reason. You know what's a trap, Ryan? <laughs> Crappy hair treatment products. Luckily, Keeps is not that. They give you get you set up with a convenient virtual doctor consultation. Treatment as low as ten dollars per month. Discreet packaging. Again, make sure you get to the uh, hair loss before hair loss gets to you. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash SGP to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K E E P S dot com slash SGP to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash SGP. I like keeping my hair. I also like keeping my money. I'm keeping my money away from big wireless trying to rip me off. No, thank you. Thank God there is Mint Mobile. Right? That's right. Mint Mobile gets you set up with. Premium wireless for only fifteen dollars a month. I know it sounds too good to be true. Trust me, it's not. And again, they have a seven-day money-back guarantee. So you try it out for whatever reason you don't like it. Seven-day money-back guarantee. You can use your own phone, your own number. Again, you don't have to switch those to switch over to Mint Mobile. And again, it's only fifteen bucks a month. Get your new wireless plan. Fifteen dollars a month. Premium wireless plans shipped right to your door. MintMobile.com slash Sports SGP, mintmobile.com slash sports SGP. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month. Mintmobile.com slash sports SGP. Moving over to the top 25. And a uh, reminder, we have a special guest that will be joining us after we do the picks before Lockdog T is going to bring a uh, FCS, former FCS star, onto the show. Arkansas heads to Athens, Georgia. Bulldogs laying 18 and a half. Arkansas. Sui plus 700 on the money line. Colby, what are you doing here? I'm on the Bulldogs, man. Uh, yeah. Look, I like Arkansas, but with the, the, the status of KJ Jefferson, first off, I, he's done a great job and I was all over Arkansas money line last week. Yep. Same. Um, Dog. but, but that's, this is where the, it stops here. Georgia, you know, I think it's a bad matchup for them with Jefferson, not being all the way healthy. They all, they're also their best receiver was dinged up for Arkansas. I just think it's a bad spot to be coming into Athens. I know Sam Pittman, former O line coach of Georgia. So maybe, you know, he, maybe he knows a little bit about Kirby smarts defenses, but I, I, I still just think the offense you could get away with it against a and M because a and M should have never been in the top 25. Ooh. I said that on the college experience. Did, I still did. believe that my bad um, I should listen. and, and uh, no, I mean, I, yeah. I, I think the handicap for me is like Georgia is the best team in the country uh, right now. I, I, with the exception of Alabama, I mean, they've played no one, no, uh, yeah. but I'm saying like, they've looked really good yeah. Yeah. even playing. No one. I, I don't think this is Arkansas is going to be a real test for them in Arkansas. 
I mean, that that felt like a massive victory for them. They're going to be celebrating. I, I just think it's too much to ask them to get up for this game in Athens. Well, and I think it's too much for uh, look. And I, I I don't dislike the kid. I think he's played great so far. KJ Jefferson. Yeah. If he's not a hundred percent, and I can tell you that backup quarterback when he came in against A and M, he did not look very good. So it, uh, just the fact there's a chance that guy plays against Georgia's defense, that's two pick sixes. Uh, and then KJ Jefferson not being a hundred percent and the, you know, you need to be a hundred percent because they do heavy option read. You know what I mean? Like he runs the ball a decent amount. So I, I'm all over the bulldogs minus the 18 and a half. I think they get it done. Kramer going to make it a, a, a cosign here. Or? Oh, I thought it was going to be the hot takes. I figured you, you uh, chalky McChalkerson over here would be on uh, Arkansas, a dog that has Please, maybe we can call it a hog with fleas. Uh, yeah, th- this one concerns me because everyone is taking Arkansas. Every- oh, really? All nice. of a sudden, everyone is aware of the, uh, the 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 defense they're running there with a three-two-six or whatever. I everyone, love what Barry Odom's doing. Everyone's though. talking about Barry Odom. They're in the top ten, Sean. Uh, they're four and zero oh, uh, for the first time since two thousand three. They just won a big game in a house that was built by an alumni. Uh, Got to wonder, Filthy. maybe were they hearing the radio calls of Jimbo? My bad for not fading Jimbo button last uh, last week, by the way. Uh, so I got to look past that one. Uh, the one angle, though, I found this nugget about JT Daniels. Mm. Ineffective against top twenty five day uh, tw- top twenty five teams dating back to his time with USC. Eight touchdown passes, six interceptions in those high profile matchups. Which three of those touchdowns coming last year against the 25th ranked Missouri Tigers? So, uh, got you got to ask yourselves: Is he is he ready to step up and and play at that level in a big game? I mean, I do think he might be slightly overrated, uh, but I just think Arkansas. I mean, even, okay, let's maybe throw a couple picks. I don't think I think they're going to have a conservative game plan for JT Daniels because I think the Georgia defense is going to shut down the Arkansas offense, and Georgia's going to. They always have great running backs. They're running back you. They're just going to load up and give give the ball to their slew of running backs and and you know play a, a conservative game. I'm looking at a score of like 28 to seven. Yeah, the something under, like that. 49 yeah. seems like a high total for this game. Georgia's front should shut them down. I, it is a lot of points, but I guess I guess that's what you have to do. And I, the last thing I'll say is, with Clemson, with a lot of teams going down, Georgia very clearly is going to have an opportunity to make the playoff. Even if they don't win out, even if they lose to Alabama in the sec championship. So they need wins like this and they need wins like this to look good. And so I I think, uh, I think the defense locks it down. Honestly, I'd be looking to play props here. Cause I think this mm. game goes way under. I think this is like a Georgia 20 just in total. Dude, I it think could this be like, 21, nothing. I was going to say, this is yeah, like a, yeah. a 23 to like Three. six game or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, I mean, I wonder what the price would be on like an adjusted uh, under of under thirty five. That could be kind of interesting. But this is also could be the the yearly Georgia disappoints us once again game. Georgia had Hopefully more. Not. Georgia, I think, what had more touchdowns than Vanderbilt had first downs last week. Vandy's pretty bad though. <laughs> <laughs> Cincinnati, this should be a good game. Maybe the game of the week. Cincinnati heads the South Bend, Indiana. Notre Dame, a two point home dog, plus one fifteen on the money line. 51 is the total man. I, I, I get Cincinnati's better. This is interesting because this feels to me like a classic game that Notre Dame would blow. Um, the issue here though, is I, I don't know. Like I, I really liked do we, is drew pine going to be a quarterback in Colby? Do we know that for Notre Dame? Cause I, I mean, again, the, the radio announcers were very effusive, but it sounded like he was looking pretty good throwing the football their defense came to play. I mean, they blew out Wisconsin late. That was, that was a game. It was a good test. Cincinnati is coming off the bye. It just, I don't understand why Notre Dame's a home dog here. This, this to me feels like Notre Dame two fairly even teams. Why does it Notre Dame get the home field advantage Kramer? What am I missing as far as this line being seemingly off? Well, I I think um, for one, this is the second game in a ridiculous streak where they have uh, five straight opponent opponents coming off a bye, starting with Wisconsin, yeah, Cincy this week, Virginia Tech, and then USC and UNC. So I think probably a little of that, probably the, the real realization that if they made this number 
I think if you make if Notre Dame becomes a favorite, I think people are buying back the other way because if you dive into the box score, as you say, the Notre Dame score probably a little misleading last week, so maybe they're they're a little overvalued if if anything. Uh, it is trappy, I'll tell you that, because you do initially look at it and say, "Oh, that's interesting." Since he's favored in that game, I didn't think Notre Dame was very good last week. I think they're tremendously overrated now in the top ten, under undefeated. Coming off the game where Brian Kelly passes Newt Rockney for the all-time winningest coach in Notre Dame history, is that a letdown spot? Is that potentially a letdown spot? This is a playoff but, game, Sean. This is an absolute midseason playoff game. No, and, and that's why I think they're going to be up, and that's why I'm surprised they're a home dog. Colby, where are you at with this game? I'm on the Irish man, and uh, Cincinnati, you know, can't afford a slow start like they had against uh, Indiana because yeah. one of the things I think Brian Kelly is great at outside of the college football playoffs is Eating. dictating <laughs> like the, the pace of the game. He he's a master at it to me, meaning like he can, like he always seems to be in control of the games. And, and to me, I, I think with Cincinnati still needs to prove it to me. I don't know. I think that if you want to call out that Indiana game, Look, I think Cincinnati was the better team, but I also think they dressed up that score. It was a lot closer of a game. Yeah, it's a guy that, who had yeah, money on yeah. Cincinnati. I, I felt pretty fortunate to get that W. So I'm on the Irish man. Uh, Brian Kelly, I think, is the difference in this, and I think Jack Cohn. Now that's the the only concern really is, is Jack Cohn is is penciled into right now to be the starter. I don't know how healthy he is, but another thing that Notre Dame has going for him is Marcus Freeman, their defensive coordinator, was the Cincinnati defensive coordinator a year ago. So if anyone knows the the Bearcats offense, it is I like that angle. Yeah, yeah. I, come to my head. I got I got to take the uh, home dog here, but it, Cincinnati Notre Dame's going to have their hands full. But I'll, I'll take the Irish catching two at home. Kramer, the, the number is fishy, and I, I I do wonder where it goes because it it seems like the number is made here because it's more likely to go to minus three than it is to flip over to the Notre Dame side. I think. Hmm. Um. That being said, if you like Notre Dame, you grab it now because you could see the money come in and flip it. I just, I'm going to take Cincinnati. I don't, I didn't think Notre Dame was a great game. Like Colby said, maybe Brian Kelly uh, pulls out some witchcraft and they, they like, they muck up the game enough uh, to take advantage. But Cincinnati's got to see blood in the water. You love this team preseason. This is a, this is a bona fide team. They're coached well, and they now see an opportunity where this team can make the playoff. Now, the ACC has tapped out. Uh, the the alliance is getting weaker. The Pac-12 <laughs> does have an outside shot, but I would say the Pac-12 and Cincinnati have equal parts right now, mm. and mm. I think they're both ahead of Notre Dame. This is a playoff game. Since he will perform, I think they're the 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 better team, the better coach, and they they this this is going to shock the college football world. Even though short favorite, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it it feels like. <laughs> If they win in, in in South Bend, it's an upset, but they're they're favorites. So that that to me is where uh, to me that tells you they should be favored. But like to me, I looked at this. I thought it was going to be Cincy by three. Yeah, because it was one of those spots where they're clearly the better team to me, but they're on the road. But I think betters are going to take Cincinnati as a dog. So let's go. You guys are on the wrong side. Ole Miss catching fourteen and a half as they head to Tuscaloosa to square off against Nick Saban. Total sitting at an insane seventy nine points. <laughs> Alabama's defense has had some issues. Saban, he's twenty-one and zero against former assistants, one, uh, which is an insane that you've even played that many games against guys yeah. who are now head coaches. That says something. He won uh, last year. They won sixty-three forty-eight. This is in Alabama. Oh man, I mean, Ole Miss is fun. They're coming off a bye. They have an ability to put up points. But d does Alabama little brother him here? Colby, where you at? I think they want you to take Ole Miss. Yeah, and, that's and why they made it fourteen and a half. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but then I, but man, Matt Corral, they can throw it. They can move the ball. My, my problem is, is that I don't know how good they are. Louisville, not barely good. beat Florida State last week, and we know Florida State's dog shit. Tulane gets gets beat up by UAB, so Tulane's one and three now. So maybe the Green Wave aren't what we thought they were. Maybe and, Oklahoma. and then they played Austin P. I know Sean's governors, uh, yep. you know, but they just lost to the Eastern Kentucky Colonels in, in the FCS. Uh, I, I'm not all the way as I know. I have the corral ticket. I think the offense will be fine. I'm just not all the way on board yet with Ole Miss. I, I need to see it against better competition for me to buy in. 
Uh, give me it, Bama minus the fourteen. Yeah, and a half. it does feel like a get up spot for Alabama. And you look at you look at these games. I mean, like what has Alabama really had to get up for so far this season? Florida, they kind of slept walk a little bit, but that was on the road. I just don't see them doing it at home, like falling asleep at the wheel. Uh, maybe maybe Old Miss back towards this, but I think you got to take Alabama minus fourteen and a half. I mean, the line is begging you. It's telling you we got to take Alabama, and I think it comes down to the fact that Ole, Ole Miss will just allow too way too many points, and it'll be a fun game. But at some point, I mean, look, it, this is a tough one because I feel like if this number is eighteen and a half, I'm like, oh yeah, Ole Miss all day. Yeah. But fourteen and a half is like the classic. Oh, give you that mm. hook. You want some candy? You want some candy? Give me Alabama laying fourteen. Well, and, and, and honestly, Alabama. First half may be the way to go. Alabama fourteen and three against the spread in the first half in the last seventeen games. That's insane. How have we not been riding this? I don't know. Yeah, I just uh, when you see the total at seventy nine, it turns fourteen and a half into like seven and a half, just because there's so much more scoring. Baylor heads to Stillwater, Oklahoma scoring off against Oklahoma State. Okay, State laying three and a half. Plus one fifty five. Baylor is on the money line total forty nine and a half. Baylor coming off a huge win. Is it a letdown spot for them? I don't know. Th- this to me feels like a field goal game, but maybe maybe this is. Uh, will Will Baylor be able to get up for this game, Colby? No. Um, I'm on Oklahoma State. I locked them up uh, against Kansas State. Oklahoma State. You know, Spencer Sanders was dinged up early in the year. I know he wasn't playing great, but. Uh, I, I think in general, like Baylor is just that, that was a magical win. It was much like Bowling Green's win against Minnesota. You look at the yards, Baylor, 282 yeah. to 479. Baylor got destroyed Whoa. yardage wise. It's one of these ones where you just say, how the fuck did they win that game? Uh, and I think coming into Stillwater where, you know, it's a tough place to win. Like I said, I just, we locked up uh, okay state against K state last week that hit. Uh, I'm going to do it again. I think OK State's a better team, and I think they're improving. And I, I think even they're improving at the quarterback spot where their 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 big weakness was out the gate this year. Uh, crazy. They had nine penalties for 100 yards. They also uh, held the ball for only 24 minutes. Baylor should not have won the game. Uh, and again, maybe we should be fading more teams that are four and zero. And I'm not applying this globally, but this Baylor team, the stock is as high as it's going to be all year. And again, there's just something about this Oklahoma State team because when you watch them, it's it's not a fun. Like you, it's ugly, I almost yeah. recommend yeah. not watching them. <laughs> but 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 that like in this situation, I'm I'm fading Baylor more than I'm backing Oklahoma State. But it, you know, it's always fun to have some Gundy action. You know. Yeah, it is. Uh, it just seems like it's going to be a tough spot for Baylor. Again, that was like a crazy come from behind win. Or and as you guys point out, like a game they probably shouldn't have won. They they won anyway. So I'll, I'll roll with you. Get some uh, Gundy there. Okay, State minus three and a half. Four and zero oh in the top twenty-five. Reading the press clippings. Picks wise, baby, it's the number one app for sports betting picks. Helmed by a team of trend watching, data devouring sports fanatics, giving you the who, how, and why behind every prediction for every game, every day, and every sport. Loaded with best bets, props, and parlays. You can find in-depth analysis on every game, all for free. Found your pick. Search the latest sportsbook promotions to sign up an account. Pair the odds and finally place your bet. Download the free Pixwise app now to make your next bet better. Pixwise backs responsible gambling. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler. We're also brought to you by Odds Crowd. That's right, Odds Crowd, home of a ton of free fantasy betting contests, and of course, we got the uh, season-long college football one. Our weekly. $100 uh, SGPN contest, which you can only play if you have the SGPN app. Oddscrowd.com. Download the app. Make sure you get involved in there. And uh, let's see. the uh, They have these weekly contests as well. Let's see if I can pull up the uh, season long, see where I'm, where I am in the season long competition. Of course. Oh, what is this? Oh, shit. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down to 18th. Someone came out of nowhere. Rain 80 is now up 74 units. I'm still up 18 units. Nice uh, 14% ROI on my picks. This guy's insane right now. He's he's uh in the lead with $3,000. Again, still not too late to get in these season long contests. This guy uh seemingly came out of nowhere cuz you can do these, you know, you hit a couple of these big dogs 
and uh, you can really skyrocket in value. Yeah, it looks like he entered the contest, the season long contest, a couple days ago. So, still a chance for you guys to get involved, hit some of those big, massive money line dogs. Michigan heads to Wisconsin. Wisconsin, a one point home dog. Yeah, money line's pretty split here. Michigan minus one fifteen. I'm all over Michigan here. I mean, Graham Mertz has just looked horrific. His confidence has to be rattled, and maybe it's you. You can say like it's a bounce back spot for Michigan after that loss, but that felt more like a dream crusher game uh, for me. If someone's gonna lose their NIL deal, it's gonna be Graham Mertz. Uh, and real quick, I don't know if you mentioned it, but picked on D a mm. couple spots ahead of you. Oh, I'm an 18th. In, what is, what is uh, Dundee? 16. Oh man! And uh, mm. ju- just for those keeping track at home, I've dug out of my deep my my deepish <laughs> hole, and I'm coming for you in 85th place. All right, look uh, at. But Graham Mertz, I mean, if you're if you signed a deal with Graham Mertz, you're looking to get you're talking to the lawyers right now. How do we how do we void this deal for poor performance? Uh, as much as I would tell you, always fade Harbaugh. Always fade Harbaugh. He hasn't. Uh, Harbaugh hasn't won uh, at Camp Randall. Michigan hasn't won in Madison in a couple decades. But man, I, I how do you how do you he he's he threw more touchdowns to Notre Dame in the fourth quarter in the last two minutes of the fourth quarter than than he did to his team. I. I don't know how you play. Is he starting? Are they going to take him out? He, he he's he's unplayable in my mind from a gambling point of view. But Dan DeBase, what do we what do we uh, what do we see in here in this game? I mean, I'll key in on this for your stats. Uh, during uh, his last seven games against Power Five team, Graham Mertz eleven interceptions, three touchdowns, just 184 yards <laughs> passing per game. Is that bad, bad man? But, but I am taking Wisconsin wow. because because Whoa. they. Michigan did not look good against Rutgers to me, man. No. Like maybe out the gate. No, but I again, like, I was I had Rutgers as my bonus lock. That was a no sweat <laughs> lock of the year, and, and to me, that was more Rutgers it being is, decent. It, right? Yeah, as being decent. Again, uh, this is less a bet on Michigan and just more a bet against Wisconsin. You could make the case for Wisconsin. It's like they're going to do everything they can to take the ball out of Mertz's hands. This is a get up spot at home. I I get the angle. They get their ass whooped in Madison every time though, dude. Uh, I mean, no, they've gotten I mean, their ass whooped the past two times they've played this game, but especially in Madison, 35-14. They were up 35 nothing in that game. Shit does seem to matter. Uh 24-10. 45, 24, 37, 21. I'm going to take Wisconsin. I think Jim Leonard dials up a defense. I don't think Michigan, Michigan's missing Ronnie bell. I think they're not going to be able to run the ball against Jim Leonard's defense. And I God think it's it. going to be a slug. This fest. is, a, this is an Wisconsin. Ugly game. Yeah. Why are you doing this to me? I don't want to take, give me, give me Wisconsin Colby Swade. I can't take Harbaugh. <laughs> it is a great, I mean, I, I do. I'm on the, I'm on, I'm staying on the Harbaugh Island. I do like the narrative of taking the team that just got blown out. Uh, with a bigger score than maybe uh, it should have been on a nationally televised but, game, but they're they're not they're not getting any points though, you know. I, I just I I regret not going back to my black book and seeing never 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 take Wisconsin away from home, especially as a favorite. That like I fucked up. Oklahoma laying ten and a half in Manhattan, Kansas. K State a ten and a half point dog, plus three thirty on the money line. I mean, again, maybe I'm. Maybe I'm just a TMZ college football fan, just a you know random handicapper hitting almost fifty seven percent. But <laughs> I think, I mean, I can't take Oklahoma laying ten and a half against this Kansas State team. Who, again, they're they're a flawed team for sure. But th- uh, how many ten times? And a, ten and a half is a little too frisky for me. I, I'm sure the angle for Oklahoma is like, no, trust us. This is when Spencer Rattler gets it figured out. This is when the offense is unleashed, and maybe this is the case. And I, I'm fading Oklahoma until I see something to justify these big road favorite spreads. Colby, where are you at? Uh, look, Lincoln Riley's never beaten Kansas State, yeah. and, and Manhattan, Kansas, is a place that I don't care. I understand Skylar Thompson's been out, even though he yeah. warmed up in the in the in the game the other day. Could he play? I, I maybe there's a chance that he does mm-hmm. because I saw that he was warming up. But um, I don't care. Like that's too many points. That if you're beating Tulane by five, I'm gonna ride with K State to figure some things out. I like the defense. I like the run game. Um, it's just got it. They if they can just throw the forward pass, I think they're in this game. Now that is a big if. But I also think just being in Manhattan, Kansas. That's another thing. Is Oklahoma hasn't hit the road yet. Oklahoma and Michigan have yet to play a road game. And and this year, college football fans, it matters. It and matters. And Texas on 
Jack. Yes. Yes. Period. Look ahead. And they've lost two in a row to, to K State. Uh, this could be the get right. I mean, I guess I worry that the talent finally gonna pop. Um, this Oklahoma team has not been good, but they But I mean, I, I I think if that was the case, wouldn't we have seen some signs of it? Like just watching Spentler just eye test alone drop back. It's like I don't see a first round pick there. I don't see this dynamic, super athletic talent that you know can't be guarded. I, I mean, I don't know. It's yeah. tough when uh, you're gonna see this team's resolve. Uh, it's you know, it's not a, it's never a good look when a when a team a fan base is clamoring for a backup, let alone at the college level. Yeah, and, uh, and, for a kid who's never thrown a fucking pass. I mean, and, and by the way. I didn't mean to say I said that stat incorrectly. Lincoln Riley has beaten K State. It's Chris Kleiman, K State's head coach, that is undefeated against Lincoln Riley. Two and zero. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Texas next year. Yeah. Come on. So we're all in, we're all in K State there. Last, <laughs> last of the uh, additional games here. Auburn heads to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. LSU laying three and a half. Auburn plus one fifty. I've kind of just been fading LSU to decent results. Uh, of course, they snaked out uh, Mississippi State last week. But Colby, where are you at with this game? <laughs> this one is a true. In a way, it's like uh, they're kind they're of both teams. Team. I don't like. I, I'm not interested to bet on. You know Auburn I mean? should have lost. Like Georgia State was a flat out better team last week. Anyone yeah. that watched that game, and by the way, there was some home cooking on a huge 30 yard catch by Auburn, where the ball clearly hits the ground. Um, uh. It's tough because I don't think LSU. I watched that LSU Mississippi State game. They didn't look great in that win. No, they, Mississippi State like kind of outplayed them. They just yeah, they gave up a couple big plays and yeah, fumbled and turned the ball over in the red zone. And you can't do that. And uh, we don't think Mississippi State's the best team. But you know Auburn hasn't won in well, Baton speak Rouge. Speak for yourself, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, you know Auburn hasn't oh. won in Baton Rouge in twenty years. So I, I, I'm gonna go LSU. I don't love it, but give me LSU. <sighs> Because Auburn, what are they doing at quarterback? Is Finley the starter now? He's going up against his former team at LSU. This both feels like a spot where you can't lay this many points with LSU against. I mean, we think Auburn is going to, at, at a minimum, be a better defensive test, right? The, the Mississippi State. I'm just, I'm yeah. just out on Auburn. I, I think even more. So I'm out on kind of both these teams, but I'm out on Auburn more. So I'm going to go LSU minus three and a half. Like Colby said, I mean, at, at the end of the day. The home field, I'll take that in this matchup, but I I don't want any part of this game at you know I mean I guess yeah I don't know I haven't won in twenty years in Baton Rouge. That's all I need. Yeah, that that was the nugget that I mean, and and most people will tell you that's one of the better uh, home home fields out there. And also, if you're LSU, you start you got you got to start realizing like you know there's blood in the water too. Like you're three and one. Like it's not you're not a very good team. You lost to UCLA. Have covered three in a row. Yeah. Yeah. No, and uh yeah, they're coming out of it. Looks and uh looking there's opportunity. For, I mean plenty of opportunities, Ryan. Speaking of opportunities, once in a lifetime opportunity to get into simplified DFS, aka prizepicks.com. Make sure you head over to prizepicks.com. Use our promo code SGP for a 100 percent deposit bonus up to one hundred dollars. Again, You'll hear uh, Kramer and I. We do a DFS lineup yep. on the uh, DFS for NFL. Colby and uh, Nick do a whole uh, DFS show, giving some overs, unders. Uh, gave away a lineup that hit for one fifty, I think, last Friday. One hundred fifty k. Holy Woo! shit! Yeah. No, I and it's pretty easy too. Like a twenty dollar entry, you go three for three on your over and unders. Twenty dollars turns into one hundred dollars. It's fun. It's easy. And uh, again, if you're in a state where you can't access player props. This is a nice workaround. So head to prizepicks.com, promo code SGP. Joining us on the line, Stone Labanowitz. Stone, uh, thanks for calling into the show, man. Appreciate it. No, I appreciate you guys, man. I've been waiting since I don't know what month it was in the spring that I first chatted with you guys, man. I've been waiting to do it again. Excited to be here. Yeah, we had you on. Uh, you know, helped root on the Salukis, got you a nice uh FCS playoff win and now uh, on the road too. Yeah, that was yeah. a huge win, man. And and watching that game live in our studio was pretty awesome. Just like, oh, that's our guest, Stone. He's killing it. I always said, oh, uh, I I thought your game reminded me a lot of like a Doug Flutie, maybe a Drew Brees. Did you ever have a quarterback you modeled your game after? Doug Flutie's probably probably good. <clears throat> now size and stature, I was never really able to compare myself 
to those guys in the NFL. I'm 5'10", I'm 190 soaking wet. So there, there's a few guys I can pick from. I don't run as fast as Russell Wilson. So, yeah, at times it was a guy like Drew Brees or it was a guy like Matthew Stafford. I always saw myself as, I don't want to give myself this name, but with a gunslinger mentality, I'm not really afraid of <clears throat> guys on the other side of the ball. You know, I like my guys all the time. I like my team. And that's kind of how Matthew Stafford looked worked in Detroit and now he's looking and working like that in LA. So just a fearless guy, a guy who really doesn't care who's across the ball from him, to be honest. Yeah. All right. I like that. Matty Stafford. I mean, that, that stood out in the FCS playoffs, man, was I thought like, you know, you did, you took your shots and uh, to me, uh, you very impressive performance and, and uh, yeah, man, you, you're a baller certified baller. <laughs> we're, 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 we're going to crown that here. And now, uh, kind of, uh, you know, next chapter in the stone career, you got a gig with uh, ESPN West Palm beach working with the uh, Miami dolphins. What do you got? What do you got going on with those uh, was new opportunities and yeah, life's good. Life's good. I got a radio television, digital media degree, and I never want to leave the realm of the sport of football or, you know, whatever, wherever it takes me. So I'm doing as much media stuff as I can. This is my life. It's forever going to be my life. Getting a chance to watch the dolphins and hurricanes play on a weekend basis. Just it, it, it keeps me going. It, it's so motivating. Um, I literally listen to you guys on a <laughs> daily basis. I'm Let's a go. power guy. All these, all, all these things. I'm so invested in my life. I'm a fantasy football player. I'm an active DJ. There we I got go. My burner account. Hashtag I, got my burner account. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm, like I said, I'm never going to leave this realm. So I'm attacking things media specific and uh, mainly football, but things are going really well. It's been West Palm beach. I'm going to be on the radio a little bit. I'm going to be on the ground working for the team. So same thing you guys are doing. I'm interested in it. I'm going to be here for the rest of the time. Awesome. Well, let's the, the let's, grind is real. Yeah. Let's talk about it. College football kind of been an interesting season. Of course, Colby is always, you know, anti the college football playoff that it's not expansive enough. You came from a league that had a legit FCS, you know, a legit playoff bracket you know, it being only four teams, if you had to pick right now, who would be your four teams to put into the college football playoff? Hey, I could vent. You guys know <laughs> I'm an FCS guy. I could vent about how bullshit it is that we only pick four teams to watch. Yes. I hate it. I hate it. I mean, I know what it feels like to be a higher seed and to be a lower seed. So, so I think this year, more than any other year in the FCS, it's a level playing field. I think of course, if I'm going to get to the point, we're going to throw Alabama in there. We're going to throw Georgia in there. Things could shake up if Arkansas went into Athens and took them and, and take them down. That's the only way I see Georgia kind of moving out of that, especially maybe they're on upset watch later on in the season. They're going to play Auburn. They're going to play Florida. They're going to play <clears throat> Missouri and some of those other SEC schools that could give them that second loss if Arkansas decides to beat them. But if you're Alabama, Georgia, I'm a Jack Cone fan. I know you guys rode with Notre Dame last week. Yeah, so the hell did I? I love that. So I can see them slipping in there. I'm going to annoy people, but at the same time, I, I think they're good competition for a team like Georgia, and they could sleep them, in my opinion. I don't think Cincinnati gets a shot. There's no one on their schedule that that anybody really cares about besides the Notre Dame matchup they have Saturday. But I don't. There's nothing else on their schedule besides like an SMU that would be a trademark win for Ritter and those guys to kind of catapult into that four team spot. I like Oklahoma. Now I'm going to get into Oklahoma in a little bit, hopefully. Ooh, nice. Um, but they just moved from four to six, but I think there's some teams on their schedule and they've done enough last year and they have the notoriety to slip in there. If one of the teams wanted to slip up, but if I give you my four teams, I'd go Alabama, Georgia, Oregon, and it's a toss up between Oklahoma and Notre Dame for me, but those would be my four or five. Yeah. I like it. And I, and I think you totally nailed it. We talked earlier in the show about how the Cincinnati Notre Dame game is kind of a, a, a playing game to a certain degree. If, if Cincinnati really wants a shot to get in there, they have to get this win against Notre Dame, obviously. And if Notre Dame gets it, it certainly helps uh, build their case and uh, yeah, we'll see. But uh, yeah, it, it's tough to, I mean, this really is a good opportunity for the PAC 12 to get a team in. Yeah. I kind of like going full anti Alliance here. Three SEC teams: <laughs> Arkansas, Georgia, <laughs> and Alabama. And then give me Cincinnati. The alliance is out. <laughs> if, if Alabama, Georgia, and Arkansas make it to the playoff, 
I would put any amount of money in the world. We expand to a 16 team playoff. <laughs> yeah. Nobody. It, yeah. We are going to burn the house down if there are three SEC teams. In the well, and if, well, if if that's what it takes to get 16 team playoff, then so be it. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean I, I, I'm ready to burn the house down. Look, Georgia <laughs> looks legit, but they look. Clemson's two and two, and they've barely beat Georgia Tech. Wow. And the other one was South Carolina State. Yeah. So, like to me. That is your best win on the resume. Well, I, I think we're going to learn a lot about Georgia in how they deal with Arkansas. I mean, granted, they're at home; the spread's big. We kind of broke that game down. But if if they struggle against Arkansas, or if or if like Stone's saying, if if somehow Arkansas can go into Athens and get that outright victory, then they're you know obviously that but, that changes. But go back to that Georgia Clemson game; they didn't even score a touchdown on offense. Now, I, do I believe mm. in the Georgia defense? Yes, I do. The front seven but that, is amazing, but. Uh, I, I still have questions. JT Daniels is a guy that came. He was out here in uh, USC. I think he's a talented quarterback, but in, in big games, it's yet to be seen. Um, it, so until I see that, I, I, I'm not all the way in on Georgia. But then again, the SEC East. I mean, I think Florida. Florida could beat Georgia. Florida could beat Georgia, man. So uh, where Absolutely. do you stay, where do you stand with the Gators and, and, and what's going on with Dan Mullen? <clears throat> Listen, I'll never back down from from being such a a hater on on playing two quarterbacks on a time or there being quarterback yeah. turmoil in the middle of the season. Emory Jones has looked at the past few weeks, but with all that chatter, when Anthony Richardson comes back from that hamstring, you're going to get the we want Caleb Williams going in a swamp sooner or later if Emory Jones wants to not play that well. So I stand all right with the with Florida. I mean, I think they're a top ten team, no doubt. But I think they will slip at some point during the season. I just think you're going to see Emory Jones not play well down the stretch, whether it's two or three weeks from now, and they're going to end up with two, three bad losses on that schedule. Alabama, the way they played Alabama helps most definitely. But, yeah, and it's the same goes for Georgia as far as the quarterback room goes. Stetson Bennett hasn't played that bad. Everyone's going to remember the UAB game that he tossed five in the air and completed every single ball he threw. But when JT Daniels comes back, healthy, you're going to hear chatter, you know, why don't we keep playing Stetson Bennett? And whenever that shit starts to creep in to your team, especially at that level, and this all you're going to be asked in a press conference in the media, I'm not a fan of how that stuff goes. So I think Florida and Georgia could slip a few games and it, it might be because of their quarterback turmoil, but mm. that's where I stand on. Well, that's just how I look at it. You know, as a, as a QB expert quarterback yourself there, what are, what are your thoughts on the quarterbacks involved in the Heisman race? We uh we got Colby a uh, Matt Corral Heisman Trophy ticket that's looking pretty good right now. But what do you, what's your what's your handicap of the Heisman race so far? What'd you get that at that Corral ticket? Forty to one. Yeah, forty, 40 to, to one. one. We yeah. oh <laughs> back in back I in didn't May. Even know we got yeah. there. That's that's nasty. I think this week is the it's the hot topic as uh, as is the college football playoff because so much could happen this week is. I think the deciding punch Corral has an opportunity to go into Tuscaloosa and completely turn his odds 180. He's in plus 160, plus 165 right now. You go into Tuscaloosa, make yourself five and zero. Oh, I think you're a minus 150 favorite. You're a little no. below two to one. I think that's just where the odds go, especially if Bryce Young doesn't play that well. So you're going to move 40 to one, and he could turn into a favorite after <laughs> week five. All right, let's I not like sell Matt the ticket. Corral. Stone's convincing me. Wow, interesting. Well, what, what happens if they lose? Not an hour ago, Stone, I gave this exact same <laughs> argument. And they both called me an asshole, and so no. they wanted to sell well, the ticket. Well, so, well, listen. So, I I think the NBA MVP and the Heisman race share a lot of similarities. We want the shiny new toy. We want the kid who's hurling people's or hitting threes from half court. Corral, no homo, is a great looking dude. He he's got the <laughs> swagger. He's got the juice. Everyone's going to fall in love with this kid, especially if he goes and takes down Thanos this weekend. So I think that Matt Corral ticket's the spiciest one. I mentioned earlier, Desmond Ritter probably got the best value, but like I said, nobody's gonna give a damn when he goes and beats the piss out of East Carolina. I just don't think there's Whoa. enough that he can do. So I think it's between Corral and Young. <laughs> I love calling Nick Saban in Alabama Thanos. That's yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. Gotta we're take gonna, him down. We're gonna, we're gonna steal that one, I think. But, but what happens if if Corral, like if, if Ole Miss loses by seven, but he still throws for three fifty and It'll four probably, touchdowns? The, the, you know, the like, numbers will probably yeah. stay the good. same, I yeah. think. Yeah, I, I don't I wouldn't see it. Uh, shifting tremendously. Well, Stone, you're you're in involved in the media. You're down to talk sports gambling. You have an awesome name for a sports gambling segment. Maybe some Stone Cold Locks. 
What do you uh what do you like this? What do you like this weekend on the college football slate? Maybe two or three of your uh, favorite uh, picks here. Listen, I love you guys. I planned on telling you guys I need a freaking hashtag because I got two locks for you guys. You guys Let's go. Me, the Stone Cold Locks. It's going to be a weekly thing because we're going 2 and 0 this week. Nice. There we I go. Got two plays I really, really like. I got two plays I am a big fan of right now. I think the first one being. Oklahoma minus 10, mm. minus 10 and a half, possibly shop it around. I think you wait to take the line. I think all the money comes in on Kansas State with all the crap you're going to be hearing in the media and the questions they're going to be asking him. So that line might drop. You might get around eight, nine before kickoff. I'm there. Here's the thing you called me a QB expert. That's usually how I like angle my plays when I'm trying to bet. Good offensive minds and good offensive coaches like Lincoln Riley. Now, I know this from experience. You have a batch of plays or, or plays you can pull out of your back pocket that usually you would save for bigger opponents that, you know, play certain coverages. You know, I see it come out of coaches' pockets, even in practice, whether it's spring OTAs or training camp, there's plays your quarterback starts to develop to love and the receivers love and a head coach loves that he keeps in his back pocket. Now, I thought Chanford Caleb Williams was one of the most disrespectful things that, that I've seen. I mean, how picky can a fan base be? You have a Heisman front runner at the beginning of the season, you're fourth or sixth in the country, and you want your you're chanting for your backup. <laughs> I know. And, the game. and you're undefeated. Yeah, you haven't lost <laughs> it's the game. It's not yet. like he's lost, you know, all these games. <laughs> you haven't lost any of these games. So I think you pissed Lincoln Riley off more than you pissed Spencer Rattler off. So you're going to see early and often, I think Oklahoma take shots down the field and open the playbook off and just let Spencer Rattler, let his play do the talking, give everybody the middle finger. And I think that's what we're going to see. They're walking into a buzzsaw. Listen, I saw Kansas State play my beloved SIU Salukis in week two. Now, Skylar Thompson, who I think is the best quarterback in the Big 12, hurt his knee in the second drive of that game. They thought he was going to be out for the rest of the season. They don't know yet. I know he's not playing this week. He's not on the depth chart. They haven't mentioned him in any of his press conferences this morning. Kleiman, another FCS guy. Their backup quarterback came into the game against SIU, and they had zero confidence in him. They love Deuce Vaughn. They beat Nevada 38-17 two weeks ago. They let Howard throw the ball 12 times and hand the ball off to Deuce Vaughn 26 times. Last week, the third-string quarterback came in and threw it 19 times, and Howard threw it 12. They have no idea what the hell is going on. And that you're walking right into a buzzsaw. A pissed off Oklahoma team doesn't even care who they're playing. They're going to beat the living crap, I think, early and often out of, out of Kansas State. And, Love it. And I know in the offseason, because Climate's 2 and 0 against Lincoln Riley, but Lincoln Riley said he's going to put more of an emphasis on playing Kansas State. Uh, that will go into your point. But also, I, I as a guy that took K State because the game's in Manhattan, it's the fir- that place gets lit. And uh, the fact that uh, Lincoln Riley is winless against climate last year when they played in Norman, he had to use wide receivers as defensive backs. I don't know how they won that game because of the COVID issues that Kansas state were having. So I, I, I took K state just because of the first road trip for Oklahoma, but you don't I, have to apologize. I, I <laughs> see, I see your point, but climate's a hell of a coach to, to pull out a win in Norman with defensive backs as, uh, you know, as, as, as walk-ons and stuff and wide receivers, throwing them in there and, and to pull off that win uh, it, this game has my attention. That great, great case you made for Oklahoma. What's your other uh, stone cold lock stone? I wanted to mention Malik Willis in the Heisman talk, Ooh, but again, yeah. the same narrative as Ritter just doesn't have enough ahead of him to be able to get himself into that conversation. So what it turns into for Malik Willis is let me solidify my name. Let me boost my draft stock. How do I do that? I'm already on everyone's watch list, but I need to beat the teams that we and I should beat. So I think when I look at that Liberty schedule, there's games on it where if I'm Malik Willis, you can't lose. They're going to forget about you if you lose. Now, Syracuse played well, and that dome was kind of lit. We hate on Syracuse's dome a little bit, but Syracuse played well. It's a tough spot. It's a tough spot to go in and get the Absolutely a tough spot. So coming off of that loss, consciously as a quarterback, knowing, you know, you want to stay relevant. You want to boost your draft stock. He played well against Syracuse. I think he gets fancy. I think he lights up the scoreboard. I think Liberty scores 30, 40 plus, and Malik Willis puts himself back into that, that I'm right here. I didn't go anywhere. We're still right here, and, and that's the team we are. I think they're minus one and a half, 
two at some other places. But I think it's a statement game for Malik Willis to stay relevant and keep his name and boost his draft stock. Um, so I love Liberty minus one, minus two, where you can get him. Love it. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm gonna co-sign that Liberty pick for sure. Love Malik Willis, love what we've seen, and it's a perfect spot, right? You go into the carrier dome. You lose. I mean, it's that classic, you know, just the place was kind of lit. It's a tough place to play. Nice bounce back opportunity against UAB. Well, Stone, appreciate you calling in. Definitely going to have you back and uh, make sure you follow Stone on Twitter at Labanowitz Stone. Give him, uh, give him some of your uh, Stone Cold Locks. Hashtag <laughs> Stone Cold Locks. Stone, uh, thanks for calling in and uh, best of luck with the picks, man. Certified baller. Yeah, let's go, baby. Appreciate you guys. See you on the other side. Yeah. Happy <laughs> Time for the lock dog and tease. All right, let's do it. Lock dog and tease. I, I, oh man, Stone really uh, won me over with his uh, impassioned play for Oklahoma. I, I'm not feeling great about the Kansas State play that we made earlier. Colby will let you kick things off. What are you doing for your lock or? No, I think Kramer normally starts. Lock dog tease and bonus lock. Whatever you want, buddy. All right. Uh Kramer, go uh, ahead. Right. Happy, you want thunder or you want lightning? Happy to take the lead. All right. Uh first, let, let's mix things up. We're gonna we're gonna start with a dog. Uh I mean, I know this is a crazy angle to take, but I'm I'm happy to take the dog catching all those points. In Northwestern against this Nebraska team, there is a coaching edge. Colby is wet for Scott Frost, and I don't understand why. And I can get plus three twenty <laughs> that Adrian Martinez hands the ball to the other team too many times. So give me that uh, for my lock. Uh, let me do it one more time. I'm gonna fade Notre Dame. Love Cincinnati this week. Love, love, love Cincinnati. This is the the opportunity they could have if they could dream up a way for college football to start, it would have been this way. It would have been Notre Dame high in the rankings with a big win against the Power Five. It would have been ACC teams dropping like flies. It would have been the way it looks right now. So they are gonna cash in on this opportunity as Colby repeatedly reminded us. This is a team that is locked in. Love them to take it. And and our buddy Phil Steele also. Could be a surprise playoff team. I love that angle for my tees. It's hard for me to not want to get Fresno State on the teaser here. Getting it down to minus four against Hawaii. Love the bounce back spot there. Give me Eastern Michigan. You said wrong team favorite. Well, let's tease them up to eight and a half. And uh, for the last leg of my tees, lots of history going against this one. If min- if Wisconsin screws me over one more time, I'm going to be very upset with myself. But give me Wisconsin <laughs> plus a full touchdown at home. You don't get too many opportunities to get that against a man who wears oversized khakis. And I disagree with Stone. He did not sway me. Hmm. The red. What what do they call it now? Uh, what are we talking? It's not about? a shootout, right? It's a. It's oh a, yeah, it's the Red River. The Red uh, River handshake. Can, yeah, yeah, handshake. The now. Red River shootout slash rivalry is a big deal. So big that it's okay for Texas to look past TCU. TCU, on the other hand, fucking hates Texas. <laughs> You're stealing my play. Oh no, I'm sorry because <laughs> this is the other side of that look ahead. And boy, we haven't gotten a great opportunity to fade Sark. The the look ahead on this number was way it, we moved across some key numbers. I can play into this man as a, as a guy I, as I hand the baton. Oh, I got to do my. I got to give as out a guy that's pick, that's been you know uh, somewhat friends with their athletic director at TCU. Oh. He's told me times you know Patterson f- dials in. He truly despises Texas. Well, look at his record. He gets it done against the Longhorns year so after year. So it's and yeah. sometimes there are one sided rivalries, right? And we saw yeah. with that senator. That Texas mem- member, the politician from Texas, uh, talking to the the University of Texas person. Maybe you want to go to the SEC and get your ass kicked by uh, <laughs> Alabama yeah. instead of TCU. <laughs> Three and seven over the last ten years. Give me the Horn Frogs, baby. Which, by the way, always had a connection to them, thinking they were a little bit of the Virginia Tech of Texas, aka the Big Twelve. And for a Norm play, which, by the way, and sorry, what's the spread in the TCU game? 
Uh, uh they're four and a half. Yeah, four I'm seeing a five. Five? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go with five. Uh, and in true norm fashion, my norm salute went zero and four last <laughs> week. So <laughs> tread lightly with this one. But I mean, is, is there not a better norm sal- salute than this week than to just take Kansas State, take Texas Tech, and just parlay both sides of the pre Red River? Shootout slash rivalry slash uh, carnival slash maybe yeah. they call it the Red River Farmers Market. <laughs> hey the, Austin, it's the that's, river's get, red. Give it another year. I'm sure they got might, a good We might have that guy. name. Uh, yeah, so I, I think we go with a uh, Kansas State TCU money line, uh, not money line. Texas po- Tech, you said. No, or no TCU. Uh, t- TCU. I like it. The Red you River you Farmers did, Market. You did say uh, I'm po- all right. So, I, but and just to but be K clear, K State TCU money line. No money line. line. Any more Californians? No oh, wait, so Kansas um, State TCU <laughs> just points. points yeah, just wow. so just a two-team parlor. A look ahead, get out of town. Maybe they both win the game, but they're not covering. Okay, what am I gonna do here? All right, I like man. I really like USC. I hate them as a team, but uh, I think you gotta lock them up here. That Colorado's just dog shit. Their offense, USC minus seven, is the lock for my dog. I like, uh, you know what? I don't know. I mean, I, I like Eastern Michigan. That feels like a little bit of a small dog. The rest of these dogs, I mean, I, I don't want to give out K State. Here's what I'll do: I'll give out Eastern Michigan and Notre Dame parlayed as my dog. You know what? I'll just give out Eastern Michigan money line, and I'll just give out two <laughs> separate dogs. Eastern Michigan and Notre Dame since I'm what? giving out small dogs. Oh my goodness. What? I, th- I didn't know this was an option. What Multiple do you mean? dogs. <laughs> We're making up the rules Just as we breaking go. Breaking the right? rules. For my T's, give me a UTSA down to 15. <laughs> the Colby Dance special. <laughs> Alabama down to eight and a half. Wow. This is a Colby T's if I've ever seen one. Uh Notre Dame up to eight. And for my bonus lock. Liberty minus two. I'm with Stone. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a great angle to play. And for my norm play, I will give out Western Kentucky and Northwestern oh. money line parlay. So, Ryan, if you don't mind calculating that one real quick. Jesus w- Christ. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll do whatever you want. Uh, I'm Colby. Pulling up the calculator. Yeah. Look. What do you got? Lock you- dog. You bonus just, lock in a crazy play. You just don't overthink this one. It, it's it's fading the buffs, man. It's there. There. Really? Like, this line is off. It is just off. You, you know, give me give me USC minus seven. Uh, my dog. Let's have fun. Running rebels plus eight hundred. What? Ooh. UNLV plus eight hundred. Colby, what are you? Doing? Colby, you do realize you picked Alabama in the. Uh... No, 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 running rebels. Oh, U- sorry, UNLV. UNLV. You and oh, that's, that's going to be a three star review. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for the T's, let's do. Uh, let's let's uh, let's go to. Give me that Wisconsin up to seven. Okay. Give me uh, Fresno State down to three or four. I'm sorry, four. Um, that is a good tease. And let's do USC down to one. Mm. And Liking it. And uh bonus play here. He took my TCU play. So and ride with me. No, 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 no. Ride with me, All friend. Right. Although that's bad luck. We have it not is. been good uh, <laughs> crossing streams. So I'm gonna go to Wakey Leaks. If, uh, Wait, look, what the hell is Wakey Leaks? You don't know about Wakey Leaks when Louisville was stealing the plays, uh, yeah. the player the, the coaches were stealing oh, yeah. the, the like their play by play announcer was copying uh Wake Forest's playbook. So I think Dave Clausen remembers that. Oh, we are so dialed in because yeah. that would have been my. I was going <laughs> to give a lockout at the end of the show. Yes, Wake minus six and a half at Lou or against Louisville. Yeah. I think Lou Wake's for real, man. They're going to win the ACC this year. And you got a norm play? Yeah, I got hey, a norm you play. Want you got a donkey, some beer, get it all messed up. <laughs> just, just real quick. Shout on out Wake. to Norm. What's like that? that's the kind of thing that really pisses coaches off. Like, yeah, that's the kind of thing where he's probably been dialed in since the summer, thinking about how he's gonna fucking come into this yeah. game and the sh- thrash. I'm all over this. So let's mo- let's do a money line parlay here. Let's go with uh, uh where are these dogs here? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, give me New Mexico against Air Force. Rocky Long, great track record defending the triple option. 
So New Mexico uh, against their, their 10 and a half point dogs against their air force. And let's do Kentucky at home against Florida. So you have New Mexico with the points parlayed with Kentucky. No, no, no. Both on the money line. Let's have some fun. New Mexico, right. Kentucky money line parlay. What were All those right. prices? Uh, and again? I'm trying to grab those prices right now. You want to, Sean? I got your uh, calculated while we were uh, doing that. What am I looking at? Seventeen to one. Woo! Let's go. And then if you could get me some money line prices, uh, Colby, I'm, I'm grabbing happy it. Happy to give I'm you some room it. service. I'm grabbing it right now. Hey God. Um, but look, Rocky Long, the defensive coordinator of, of New Mexico. By the way, the head coach is a former player for Rocky Long when he was head coach at New Mexico. They have a great record against the the, the triple option. By the way, Kentucky plus two sixty on the money line, so it's that's that one. We should look into the uh, the, the the bonus situation for Kentucky's coach because he's gonna he's gonna clear seven wins easy this year, so he could be getting a, maybe a multi year <laughs> yeah. extension. New Mexico plus three thirty. New Mexico plus two thirty. 330. What's yeah. the other one? I, I just told you. You got oh, I, I hang on, hang on. It's uh plus two sixty. Oh my goodness. You guys are throwing out some some real I, I really oh. pushed out. Uh plus fourteen fifty. That's what I'm talking about. Let's That's have some fun. What I'm talking about. Make sure you uh leave a nice rating review for your chance <laughs> to win gear every Monday, aka merch Monday. Drop it over an Apple Podcast. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. Make sure you see Colby out in the Nebraska game this Saturday. Lincoln, Make sure you baby. subscribe to the college football and basketball experience. Two separate feeds for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean Stack of the Money Green, and he is Ryan. I look forward to seeing Wake Forest in the ACC championship. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Cram. Let it go.